this is Jay Starkey with Stories Stem from the Literacy Coalition. Here we are once again with my mom. Hi. And today we are going to be not really doing a STEM activity, but reviewing stuff about STEM. Right. Such as robots. So today we're talking about robots. And it's really easy to get your hands on some build it your own kits. You can get them for as little as $5. And you can also get them online, or you can even go online to a few different websites like National Geographic Kids and actually build your own robot that can do different tasks. Yeah. And a great book, if you're having fun with robots, is What Me What Robot. And it's not a typo, that's actually how it's supposed to be spelled. The Wadney Watt books are by Helen Lester. And it's about these books about this rat that goes to school named. Rodney Wet, but his name is actually Rodney Rat. He just can't pronounce his R's. Right. So in the first book, he was able to defeat the school bully. Mm-hmm. And in this book, for his birthday, he gets a robot, or in this case, a robot. Right. And the robot is able to do a job for Rodney. He can't pronounce his R's, but if he says something like, uh, the robot will go. Uh, so it can pronounce his R's for him. What's important about robots is they actually are machines that do a specific job for us. And there are robots that can do really simple jobs, like the Roomba that can vacuum the floor, or they can do really dangerous jobs. Like go to volcanoes or travel on Mars. That's right. Now what makes a robot are three main components. The control, which would be the brain. For or in, for most robots, it's gonna be a computer. A machine, which would be our arms, legs. Right, how we move around. And our sensors would be our five senses. Exactly. So our visual sensors would be our eyes. And our olfactory sensors would be our nose. And our taste sensors, tongue. And our audible receptors, ear. Right, and then we actually have our touching receptors too, which is gonna be our skin. Yep. So, of the three types of robots that we have to show you today, Jason built two of them. And the first one is a very simple robot. It does have controls, it has an on-off switch. Yeah, this one is really simple. Mm -hmm. It's a spider bot. All it does is, well, when you turn it on, it just moves. It goes in one direction. It doesn't do any work for you, it's just for a little play thing. Right. It's really cool. Now, this robot doesn't have any sensors. So if Jason turns it on and sets it on the box, it would climb right off the edge of the box. But since it has suction cups on its feet, it'll climb up ramps like this. Right up the side. But See? it would keep crawling if I let it and it would go all the way off the edge. Yeah, it, this thing could literally, if you let it, it will literally crawl from all around the world if you let it. Right. Now the second robot that he built is a tabletop crab. And this robot does have a sensor. The sensor's on the bottom. And this sensor is really cool because it helps it determine something important. Mm -hmm. So if I, okay, if, if I do that, it's gonna fall off or not. It senses the ends of something so that it doesn't fall off. Because if I put it on a table, it'll back off. But the creases in the table kind of stop it because if you run into it, he thinks it's a table. So what's interesting about this crab is edge. it has the ability to sense an edge and it turns so that it doesn't crash. Yeah. Now the last robot we're going to do is an Ozobot. And, and it's the smallest one. That's this one's the smallest one and this is also the smartest one. Now this robot has been given specific commands and we do our commands by coding. And in this case coding is done with colors. Red, green, blue, and black. The black means go. And then the red and the green and the other colors are going to tell the Ozobot what to do. So, let's put Ozzy, I mean, that, that's what we named it, mm -hmm. right here. Squeeze it until he says he's ready. Yeah. He's ready. Now, yeah. let's play some. Put him in action. Yeah, go ahead. So that makes him slower. Now this one makes, so, makes him faster. See? Blue, green, blue, tell him speed up. And green, blue. Green means just keep doing what you're doing. Now, we also have lots of different types of codes that we can give him. Oh, whoa, that, apparently this one actually made him do that. Well, his programming tells him if you have green, blue, green three times, you should spin around in a circle. So we're gonna move Ozzy to a different track with different colors and see what happens. 
Green made them go a little bit Now he track. stopped because this part of the track is all white, and white is not one of his color codes. See, because look, if he goes on this... He doesn't do anything. He doesn't move at all. Because he doesn't have any commands. He's not an artificial intelligence. He cannot learn on his own. He has to be given specific instructions. Now, if he's still on this, he'll now, still go. What's cool about this track that we have right now is it actually is having Ozzy change colors. So sometimes he's purple, sometimes he's green, sometimes he's going to be red. But he's not super smart. He only goes where the color codes tell him to go. Yeah, but with but with Ozzy, you can literally make crazy courses that he can literally follow. Like, let's try this one. See if it works. All right, let's see if the line is thick enough and if Ozzy can figure it out. Yeah, if it's not thick enough, he will not go. Now, if you want to build your own robot, but you don't have a kit on at home. Oh, it doesn't look like mine's thick Oh, our enough. command is not clear enough. Your command has to be thick. Yeah, but if we do it here, this one's thick. So he moves. So that one works just fine. This area is a little thick, but... Then when, when the line gets too thin, he can't think anymore. Yeah. So if you want to build your own robot, we linked a couple of lessons like through National Geographic Kids so that you can mm -hmm. build your own virtual robot online for doing a variety of different jobs like excavating ancient Egyptian tombs and things like that. Yeah, it's really cool. So today's program is brought to you by the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County. Yep. Primetime Palm Beach County and the Literacy Coalition's Stories and STEM. Thank you so much for watching and we look forward to giving you more lessons in the future. Yep. And we will set, see you next time on the next Stories in STEM.